Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Acer Aspire Switch 11, which looks like an 11.6 inch notebook, and it kind of is. You can see we've got uh, applications that are uh, sort of desktop style applications, and the Windows start screen support for all sorts of touchscreen applications, and you can see we do have a touchscreen here, but it's also more than just a notebook, it's also a two-in-one tablet. So we can go ahead and detach this, use um, finger gestures, touchscreen gestures to, uh, to interact with the device. And the reason it's called a switch is not just because you can switch from tablet to portrait mode, or uh, tablet to uh, laptop mode, but you can also go ahead and attach this backward and use it as a sort of standalone kiosk style system. It has a magnetic docking mechanism here. So you just place it there and it's nice and firm. You can pick it up by it, um, but it also detaches just by pulling. So hold down on the base and pull and it clicks right out. Now, Acer also has a 10 inch model. This is the 11 inch model that has a more powerful processor. This version was loaned to me by Acer and features a Core i3 uh, Broadwell processor, four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. And again, it runs the full Windows desktop style uh, applications. Uh, sells for between 450 and $600, depending on where you buy it. And at 450, I think, you know, it's a, it's a reasonably powerful machine that offers decent performance, but there are some quirks to keep in mind. Uh, for 600, I think it's a little bit of a tougher sell. So one thing is that it's uh, not the most portable two-in-one device that you're likely to find. It, uh, the tablet itself weighs about 1.2 pounds and the base is, uh, well, the base and the tablet together are about three and a half pounds. So it can get a little top heavy. And if you sort of tilt the screen back, you can see that it falls. Um, I've typed with this on my lap and actually had it fall over onto the floor. Didn't break, so that's good. But it's something that you're gonna wanna keep in mind that um, you don't want to tilt it back too far because it'll just fall right over. Uh, another thing to uh, bear in mind in terms of uh, limitations is that it only gets about four and a half hours of battery life. Um, Acer says you should be able to get up to six and a half, and depending on how you use it, maybe you can get a little bit more than I have. I've used it traditionally in laptop mode, and I generally can't get more than five hours of runtime out of it when I'm using it to work. Um, so, you know, for $450, if you're really looking for something portable, you can find other two-in-one devices that weigh less than three and a half pounds and get more than four and a half hours of battery life. But in terms of uh, what you get for that money, you do get a device that has much more performance than something with a Celeron, Pentium, or Intel Atom processor, which is what you tend to find in the cheaper Windows tablet range. Uh, it's got nice build quality on the tablet. The keyboard section we'll get to in a second here, but the uh, over here we've got a headset jack, Windows button, power and volume keys, front-facing stereo speakers, a front-facing webcam, there's no rear web webcam, a reset button, microphone, micro SD card slot, micro HDMI, USB, and power. On the keyboard section here, we've got an extra USB port. So we've got two full-size USB ports and um, nothing else really under the hood of this um, um, keyboard. I believe there are some models that have a 500 gigabyte hard drive in here. Uh, the tablet itself has a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. This model is just a keyboard and a USB port and a touchpad. Uh, keyboard itself is reasonably comfortable for typing. Um, let's go ahead and open something up here. We can do some typing. So uh, typing works just fine. We've got support for uh, screen brightness, volume, and other things on the keyboard. Um, so I don't really have any real complaints about the uh, the keyboard itself. The touchpad, on the other hand, is a little weird. It's um, nice and wide, which is nice, but it's very sort of clacky. And you can sort of see that even as I push down on it, not only does the whole keyboard itself move a little bit, but the uh, the device itself is moving. So we got a little shake, shake here in the keyboard section as we do that. It supports multi-touch gestures. We can do uh, two-finger clicking and two-finger scrolling. Uh, so those are nice features to have, but in terms of uh, precision, it's uh, it's not my favorite touchpad. I usually like to plug in a mouse when I'm using this device. Uh, screen resolution, it has a full HD screen. And I find that sometimes that can make things a little bit difficult to read on 11.6 inch display. So that's sort of your default 125% um, ish uh, uh, resolution. This is if you didn't even do that, everything gets really tiny and hard to read. 
I like to go with the larger option here, which just makes everything a little bit clearer and easier to read, although it can sort of mess up some things as we're seeing. Um, so you don't get it to fit as much stuff on the space when you go to this sort of 150%, but it, uh, it's a little bit easier to read. Now if your eyesight's better than mine, you might not necessarily need to do that, but uh, while I do like the option of being able to say put two windows side by side in a web browser, I'd rather be able to read the text that's in both of those windows than have everything look too tiny. Um, let's go ahead and fire up some video. And I'll talk a little bit about the screen viewing angles and uh, other features. Um, okay, so we've got a little full screen video going here. It's a high definition video. Uh, you can see we got a little bit of glare from the glossy screen, but things look pretty good from any different angle. So no problems there in terms of uh, sort of visual performance. Now again, the biggest problem is going to be that you've got four and a half hours, so if you wanted to do a cross-country flight, you wouldn't necessarily be able to watch a video the whole way unless you had a uh, spare battery or a power adapter or something with you. Um, speakers, eh, they're reasonably loud. I mean, they're, they're tablet speakers. They're not the best sounding that I've heard, um, but they'll do in a pinch. You'll probably want to plug in headphones or something else if you wanted higher performance audio. But the, uh, the memory and storage are soldered to the motherboard, but it's a compact machine, isn't it? So it interacts well with touch. Um, I find that some things can be a little bit sort of awkward when you're using a two-in-one device like this. It might get better with Windows 10, which has Continuum uh, for switching back and forth between tablet and desktop modes. But when you do things like, in certain apps, touch the screen because you wanted to use it instead of the uh, touchpad, it'll bring up the on-screen keyboard. As soon as you start typing, it goes away, but it can be a little bit disconcerting. Now, that doesn't happen in every application, but it does happen in some applications. So um, there's still vestiges, even though 8, Windows 8.1, I think, does a better job of balancing desktop and, uh, and tablet modes than Windows 8 did. Um, it can still get a little awkward from time to time. Um, so anyways, that's, that's a quick look at sort of Windows 8.1 running on the Acer Aspire Switch 11. Uh, it's a machine that offers decent performance, and you'll be able to find benchmarks and other uh, details, as well as uh, more photos and, and thoughts at lilliputing.com. Um, but the short battery life, the sort of lopsidedness, the um, touchpad, which is a little, I don't know, cheap and plasticky, um, it, it's... Not my favorite two-in-one device. I'd say that uh, I like the 10-inch version better, even though it has a less powerful processor. In a smaller package, I think this two-in-one design is, is kind of a winner. Um, and the Asus Transformer Book series offers better battery life in a uh, sort of similar design. It doesn't have the ability to flip the screen backwards the way the Acer Switch series does, but uh, honestly, I'm not sure how often you're likely to do that anyway. So that's a quick look at this two-in-one device, the Acer Aspire Switch 11, with support for Windows Store apps, desktop apps, and a Core i3 processor. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.